In a world bustling with external chaos, the significance of interior deco often goes unnoticed. However, the impact it has on our lives should not be underestimated. Tonight on Area Code, we go deeper into what deco to put where, from the living room to the kitchen to the place of dreams, the bedroom. Welcome, my name is Sabrina. Home sweet home. Our home is more than just a physical structure. It reflects who we are and is a sanctuary that nurtures our well-being. And at the heart of creating a harmonious home lies the art of interior deco. The question is, do we understand this? I speak to you offering guidance on how to create spaces that reflect our personalities and enhance our lifestyles. So joining us right now is Immaculate, who is an interior designer at Nina Interiors. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having, for having us and making time for us as well. Thank you for having me. So now we're going to be talking about the living room area and how best to decorate it and to, for it to be functional but also beautiful. Mm. So let's start off with the obvious, you know, the obvious first choice, which is furniture, mm. the couch. How do I choose the right couch for my living room? Okay, choosing a couch is actually the best thing you can do when you're starting up a, a, a sitting room. Mm. Actually, I normally advise people to first choose the furniture before they choose the paint of the house. Because once you paint the house, the paint will dictate on what kind of furniture you're going to put in there. That's true. Yeah, but when you choose the chair, the chair will help solve a lot of things that will be complicated. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, um, and it also depends on what activities are going to take place in the living room. Mm. Some people's living rooms are rarely, barely used. And some others are very busy occupied with kids and family and a lot of things take place. So that should help you determine which kind of sofa you're going to put in your room. Mm. So if you're looking at a sofa set and you want to pick a leather, a very beautiful leather set, and you have kids that can cut it, these things are really costly. Yes. So that is such a disappointment. Mm. So, but if you choose a fabric sofa, fabric sofas are really good and they can make your life much easier. Right. At least you don't have to worry so much about it. Yes, and yes. also I think another advantage for fabric sofa, especially when you have children, mm. is the fact that you can wash it sometimes. Yeah, you can wash it. Mm -hmm. Like, it really gives you a lot of ease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and when it comes to size, let's talk about size. Okay, size, you shouldn't pick a sofa that is too big for your room or too small for your room. So you really have to know your space. Yes, and how do I do that? Do I get like a tape measure and do it? No, you could actually do it practically, but it's better you get someone to come and do it for you. Mm -hmm. Because we have a team that can actually visit your home mm -hmm. and take measurements so that we can know which exact furniture to give you and where it can go. Mm -hmm. And then the choices, we give you choices, then you pick what you think would work for you. Okay. Yes. Another thing in the living room is the center table. One, is it... Is it still important to have a center table? What is its purpose? Is it mm. strictly for beauty or does it actually have a function there? Center and how do I choose the right one? <laughs> okay, a center table is really, really important. You know, when you enter a house and it doesn't have a table, it feels incomplete. Yeah, so it complements the house and it's also functional. 
it's so functional mm -hmm. uh, on top of it being aesthetic it is functional you can uh, put some decor on it you can use it to put some food <laughs> i don't know so but it has always been important and it will still be important mm -hmm. it's not something that is going to run out of trend right. anytime now mm -hmm. so when you're picking a center table mm -hmm. uh, it depends also on the sofa that you picked so when you get a sofa and then maybe it has a the legs sofa legs and they are coffee brown and then you want to put in a golden table or a color a different color table it may cause mismatch so you have to first understand what is the theme in your house mm -hmm. if you have to put in gold what other golden thing is in your house that the coffee table blend with right yeah it's not something that you're just going to pick and drop there and there's and the, there's the 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 type of sofa that I select affect, let's say, if I'm going to get a rectangular center table mm. or a round one, ah, is the yes. sofa that dictates that? Yeah, a sofa can dictate that as well, but then remember there is architecture as well. Mm. So you can build a house and it has those curves. So regardless of whatever sofa you choose, when you put a round table, it will have something that it can rhythm with. Right. Yeah, so there are a lot of things you can use to uh, make the table rhythm with everything, yes. So another question I have, especially mm. with, still with the living room, how, what other pieces can I add mm. to spice up and make the place look nice? Okay, so we have, uh, you need to create a focal point in a living room. It could be a nut piece, it could be a console table, it could be a mirror. So there are a lot of things that you can do in a living room. I can't start breaking them down yes, now. Yes. Yeah, because there is a lot of variety. It could be a standing lamp. Mm. It could be a very beautiful carpet mm. that you can add and it changes the whole theme mm. of the living room. Mm. Or even scatter cushions, something as simple as scatter cushions mm. can change a lot about your living room. Right, so when it comes to a living room, the options are very many they are endless right yes. and, and and let's talk about lighting mm. like I, I i would want to imagine it's the same the light the lighting possibilities are limitless mm. but what are some little for example i'm just starting out and i want to spice up my living room area what mm. are some little ways i can play around with the light to make it more elegant looking should i say okay so we have uh you create an ambient light and then you can create spotlights uh, spotlights will highlight the focal points in your room like the pieces that you really want your eyes to get connected to immediately mm -hmm. and there are very many lights that are available on the market it could actually be a small chandelier it depends on the size of your house That's it would actually be bigger <laughs> yeah um or standing lamps like i said mm -hmm. They can change a lot and they can they can make it better but also the best lighting ever is natural light what are the size of your windows how much light do you want to let in because if you have a room that has very wide windows and then you put in some beautiful nets then the whole room will really be lit but then if you put curtains the light can be controlled you can uh, maybe pull them to the side and the whole room is bright or control them and then use the artificial lighting yes you said something about ambient light mm -hmm. what is that ambient light is the general lighting of the room so as much as sometimes you put gypsum lights there is that one light that's the main yeah source. the main source okay. of the room oh. yes okay so you have to make sure you have enough ambient light yes all right so let's talk about the other should i say knickknacks that mm. you, are they called knickknacks i remember mm. someone once said that to me the mm. other small little things that you can add that are not necessarily functional like the console table the rug the table mm. there's other things that you can add to just give the place an elevated look okay it, uh you could use a how a plant household i plant. like i like that you say that i have yeah. a plant mm. that died <laughs> but, so I think okay. for me I should go the route of plastic plants. Mm. So do you, do you think that that's an option, a good option for people who don't know how to take care of their? Yes, actually plastic plants give you ease because we have plastic plants that actually look very natural. You would have to first touch it. Yes, yes, yes. So you'd be somewhere and you'll not worry that oh I forgot to water the plant, I forgot to do, uh, to do this. But when you're having a plastic plant. 
it really makes your life easier and it beautifies the place and it doesn't change it's constant yes. yeah and then you can also add deco items uh, like uh, something you could put on the table, something you could put in the corner, like African art pieces, those standing art pieces. Could be just small, small artworks. And then, now the trend, <laughs> the gypsum. The gypsum really changes a lot. Yes. Though it's just being embraced at the moment, mm -hmm. but it changes a lot because there are very many designs. But then it doesn't have to be too much. Because when it's too much, then it takes on the attention of the other items that you have in the house. Right. Yes. So let's talk about gypsum. How can you play around with gypsum? Because my knowledge mm. is it's for the ceiling. Is yeah. there are there <laughs> other places that gypsum goes? Yes, <clears throat> on the TV area. Okay. Yeah, uh, people are starting to put it on the TV area. They make elevation protruding walls, and that is all gypsum. So. Uh, we play around with it a lot, so it's not only for the ceiling, it's, but it can also you can also those. play around with it in other places. Yes. And you also mentioned something about like a focal point. Mm -hmm. How would you advise someone to create a focal point? Give mm -hmm. us like some key things that we can key pointers mm -hmm. that we can have in the back of our minds when trying to create this focal point okay like i said the focal point is a place that you create so it could be a wall and then you make it an accent wall an accent wall can be done by paint you can paint something on it to make it pop out or you can put a uh, wood panels there's how they put those wood panels that make the whole place look different yes. uh, but that also depends on the kind of architecture you have when you go in a house and most of the walls are windows, open windows and openings, then that option is out of the way for you. Yes. Then you have to think about other options like console tables, like a mirror, like just an art piece on the wall. Okay. Yes. All right. And, and before I let you go, Imakile, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, first of all. But yeah. before I let you go, let's, let's talk about people who have small spaces because majority of us are mm. renting and we have a small space but we want to make it exciting mm. give us like a few tips that we can s start with to mm. like i said elevate our areas of, of like our living areas mm -hmm. okay so when you have a small space uh think about the size of sofa you're putting in or the size of the bed that you're putting in okay ask for advice don't only depend on your own knowledge mm -hmm. ask for advice call in an expert because there are a lot of things you could do maybe you could only need like a sofa bed in that room or you may only need a two seat and a single seat of a sofa set but then that is something that someone can come in handy someone who's doing that kind of work yes. so that they can look at the space because each space is customized differently Interior Deco has the power to transform a space into a personal heaven, a reflection of your identity and a source of inspiration. It is an art form that transcends mere aesthetics, resonating deeply with our emotions and well-being. When I return, I ask what deco is needed in the place of dreams.